Anurag, what's interesting here is that Apple has a relationship clearly with Broadcom. It is one of Broadcom's biggest customers, but they have a contentious relationship. What does this deal do when it comes to that contentious relationship? You know, I think when you look at Apple, I think this is a little bit more diversified, uh, you know, away from Qualcomm is, I think, is what I'm reading more into this. Because for Apple's, you know, uh, case, it needs to diversify not just from, you know, one region, which is Asia. It needs to broaden its, uh, you know, partnership, uh, partner network as well, when it, uh, where it is sursing parts uh, across the world. Now, Anurag, I have to think about Apple's kind of big push to bring in homegrown chips and ask the question, does this mean that these specific chips, these radio frequency chips for 5G that Apple Bloomberg's reported is considering bringing in house for the creation? Does this mean that maybe that effort by Apple is not necessarily going as well as they had initially thought? Now, remember, Apple is never going to do these things just for cost alone. It's going to always go for the best part that's out there. You know, at the same time, and again, I say not for cost reason, but for performance, it is designing all sorts of parts internally so that the next generation phone or next generation device it's coming up with can achieve what it wants to achieve. Sometimes the partners are not able to provide that. I, I, I mean, I cannot say that, uh, you know, whether the in-house efforts are not uh, you know, going as planned or not. But it's just, again, as I said, it is just a planned, you know, way of looking at things and say, I don't want to be dependent on one supplier mm -hmm. for all my needs. I want to go, uh, you know, across the board.